Today, by God's grace, I want to speak, I want to, I want to preach from the, the theme and the subject, fear and faithfulness. Fear and faithfulness. And the very first thing I want us to consider here is a fearful pattern. A fearful pattern. If this situation sounds familiar to you, and it should if you have been following along, through the sermon series through Genesis, it's because Abraham did the same sinful thing uh, 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 25 years earlier in Genesis chapter 12 when he traveled to Egypt and in fear for his life told the people down in Egypt and told Pharaoh that Sarah was his sister. But now, two decades later, Abraham is still doing the same thing. But now when he does it, it's even worse in a sense because Abraham should know better. The two decades earlier when Abraham did this, he had just started out. He had just started out on his pilgrimage with the Lord. He had just, just, just started out. And we, we, we expect a newbie to make some mistakes. We expect, we expect a newbie to, 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 to fall uh, in some major ways. But, but, but now Abraham has been walking with the Lord 25 years longer. He's been shown uh, so many more dimensions and aspects of God's amazing grace and glorious promises. He's been in church 25 years. He's been walking with the Lord a long time, and, 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 and he's heard a whole lot of sermons. He's heard a whole lot of gospel and preached a whole lot of gospel. And, and, and so we would think that Abraham might be immune to major mistakes. But despite all that the Lord had brought him through, despite all the gospel he's heard, despite all that he's seen, despite all he knows of the Lord and of his salvation, despite even having a timeline, knowing that the Lord would return about this time next year and Sarah would have a son, Abraham is still struggling with the fear of death and succumbing to the temptation to lie. And it's important, beloved, that we see Abraham not only having a major failing, but having a repeat failing. Because that reveals to us, listen, beloved, that God can save serial stumblers. That God can rescue repeat offenders. That God can save people that make the same mistake more than once. And we know we need to know that God can do that because we need to know that God can save folk like us. Come on, somebody. Because, listen, listen, if, if, we, be, if we be brutally honest, the lie and the trick and the game and the issue that the enemy has going with us is not that we would have never have done that thing, but that we would have never done that thing as many times as we did it. The, 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 listen, listen, <laughs> what, what, what the enemy will tell you is that real Christians don't fail more than once. If you were a real believer, you wouldn't have done it that many times. If you were a real believer, you wouldn't have kept going back to that thing. If you were a real believer, you wouldn't have lusted again. You wouldn't have lied again. You wouldn't have gossiped again. You wouldn't have forgotten to pray again. See, that's the thing that plays with us. The insecurity of, man, not only did I fall, I did it again. It's it's our besetting sins that hurt the worst. It's the ones that we've returned to that get to us and get next to us and bother us about our salvation. And and listen, listen, this passage in no way excuses or downplays the seriousness of sin. It's not saying it's okay to go to it over and over again, but it reveals that repeated failures are a normal part. Come on, somebody. A normal part of the Christian life. And that, listen, God's compassion and steadfast love can still save serial stumblers. Listen, listen, the the normal Christian life looks more like a Rocky fight than a Mike Tyson fight. 
Okay, okay. <laughs> I don't use a whole lot of uh, uh, sports analogies, but, but, but for those of you who don't like sports, let me just explain that, 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 that when Mike Tyson stepped on the scene and he came in the ring, Mike, Mike Tyson was known for knocking folk out in 30 seconds or less. Mike Tyson came out there and with two blows, he would knock the opponents out. And, and, and a lot of people feel as though the Christian life looks like a Mike Tyson fight. Man, this thing gonna come along and I'm gonna knock it flat. I, I, mean, I mean, the very first blow is gonna be knockout time, 30 seconds, bam, and it's over. And, 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 and the real Christian life looks a lot more like a Rocky fight. If you all have ever seen Rocky, you know that, 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 that Rocky never knocked anybody out in 30 seconds. Where Rocky looked like he was about to lose. Rocky, Rocky got knocked down a whole lot of times. He got hit and knocked down over and over again. But Rocky's winning legacy was not in pummeling his opponents, but in outlasting his opponents. Mm. Rocky's winning legacy was in persevering past his opponents when everything looked lost. Rocky somehow always found the strength to keep getting back up. And, and, and listen, and, 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 that's, and that's what the real Christian life looks like. It, it's not that you won't ever get knocked down, but, 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 but by grace and by God's compassion and because of his promises, those promises and that grace and the Spirit of God will always pick you back up. The everlasting arms will pick you back up. Listen, I, 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 I want you to start thinking about that when, when, when you think about your particular sins. You say, man, I've, I've done it again, and, and you need to fight it again, and you need to struggle with it again. But, but listen, even if you get knocked back down, you just need to call on the Lord. Don't give up. Believe that because of God's grace, God will keep picking you back up. God will keep you in the fight. God, God will keep, but look at this, because Jesus Christ has already won the victory on your behalf. The outcome has already been written. So I don't care what it looks like. I don't care how many lumps you got on your head and lumps you got on your face and lumps you got on your life and how much you're limping and how tired you are. The Lord Jesus will continue to pick you back up. God's promise in Christ is that the power of God will keep getting us back up no matter how many times we get knocked down. Listen, the Lord knew exactly what kind of mess Abraham would make when he told this glorious promise to him. I want you to remember what, 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 what God told Abraham before he ever went down into Gerar. The Lord had come to him earlier before the whole Sodom and Gomorrah situation happened, and the Lord said to Abraham over the table, he said, I will surely return to you about this time next year. And Sarah your wife shall have a son. Listen, I just want you to notice that word surely. God knew what the Lord, listen, listen, God knew the kind of mess that Abraham was going to make down in Gerar, and he still said surely. God knew how much Abraham was going to doubt him and, and, and fear and fail and stumble, and the Lord still said surely. The Lord surely overcame Abraham's weaknesses. The Lord's surely overcame Abraham's inconsistency. The Lord's surely overcame Abraham's repeated failures. And for those of us who are joined to Christ, who are joined to the promise of the offspring of Abraham by faith, God's surely is greater than our failures. Sin might knock you down, but God's surely will get you back up. The, the, the world might knock you down, but God's surely will get you back up. And on the last day when death has knocked your body down and it thinks it has won the battle, the son of promise will return in glory and God surely will get you back up. So we see, beloved, this fearful pattern going on in Abraham's life. But I'm so grateful that we also have a faithful protection revealed in this passage. That's point number two, a faithful 
protection. The first thing we see here is we see the protection of God's pardon. The protection of God's pardon. You see, after, after, after Abraham goes down into Gerar, he deceives Abimelech, and Abimelech unwittingly, not knowing that this was Abraham's wife, takes Sarah into his harem. And the Lord comes to King Abimelech in this dream and declares to him that he's as good as dead. And Abimelech pleads his own innocence before the Lord. He says, I've, I've, I've done this in, in the integrity of my heart and with the innocence of my hands. I didn't know that, that she was his wife. She said he, she was his sister. He said the same thing. And, 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 I, and, and the Lord says something. The Lord says something shocking to, to Abimelech. The Lord says something amazing to Abimelech. The Lord says to Abimelech, now then return the man's wife, for he is a prophet. <clears throat> Wait a minute. If you put yourself in Abimelech's shoes, if you are Abimelech, there's two things you know about Abraham. You know that he's a sinner. You know that he's a deceitful man. You know that he just lied to you. You know that he doesn't deserve anything. You know that he's a sinner when he got to town and he deceived you as soon as he got to town. And the second thing you know about Abraham is that he's accepted. Mm. He, he, ooh. Abimelech, Abimelech comes before the Lord and he says, this, in essence, he's saying, this man is a liar. And God responds, this man is a prophet. Mm. How does that happen? How does it happen? That, that before the Lord, Abimelech accuses Abraham of being a liar. And the Lord responds, but he's a prophet. It's God's, it's, it, listen, listen. It's God's pardon. It's God's righteousness. I, 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 if you're Abimelech, you, you, you say, listen, I, I came to God accusing this man of being a liar, and yet God... <laughs> is calling him a prophet. God is, is allowing this man to represent the Lord before me. Uh, 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 God is, 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 is allowing this man to represent me before the Lord. How does that happen? This man is a sinner, and yet it's as if God is not counting his sins against him. This man is, is a liar, but, but it's as if Somehow God has taken his sins and put them in the sea of forgetfulness. And this man is undeserving, and yet God is, is claiming him as if he were deserving. God is dealing with him as if he were deserving. God is protecting him as if he were deserving. God, God, God is accepting his prayers as if he were deserving. Abimelech would have known that Abraham's acceptance and standing and anointing from God had nothing to do with Abraham's moral character. It's not that Abraham shouldn't walk in integrity, but ultimately his standing and acceptance before the Lord was not based on his moral character. It's as if Abraham was being blessed apart from works. Yes, yes. Mm. See, Abimelech, when he had this dialogue with the Lord, would have understood the blessedness. Romans 4, 6 talks about of the one to whom God credits righteousness apart from works. Blessed are those whose transgressions are forgiven, whose sins are covered. Blessed is the one whose sin the Lord will never count against him. And that's the only hope for serial stumblers like us, that we stand in the blessing of the righteousness that comes apart from works. 
that though the world and the flesh and the devil would say that we are liars, that we are undeserving, and that we are condemned, the Lord in Christ says to us that we are prophets, that we are pardoned, that we are accepted, that we are beloved, that we are defended, that we are claimed, and that we are heard in prayer for the glory of his great name. And New City, aren't you glad that it's not contingent and dependent on the tally sheet of your life? <clears throat> that when the Lord declares righteous or unrighteous, that when the Lord declares condemned or pardoned, that when the Lord de de declares accepted or rejected, it has nothing to do with how well you personally did, but it has everything to do with how well Jesus Christ did. When the devil throws your repeat failures at you, when he stands as the accuser of the brethren before the Lord and said, but, 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 but this man did this and, and this man did that and, and look how many times he's done it. When, he, when, when your flesh and your heart and your conscience reminds you that look how many times you've fallen, you can remind your heart that, that the Lord is not keeping count. Oh, Lord, that, that, that the Lord is not keeping count, that I'm under the blessing that nullifies the count. I'm under the blessing that, 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 that does not depend on how many good things I did and how many bad things I did. Blessed are those who the Lord's, whose sins are covered. And the Lord's sin, the Lord will never count his sin against him. The Lord is not keeping count. And you can tell the devil, you can count all you want, devil. But my sins are more than the hairs on my head. If God should mark iniquities, who could stand? But I'm standing in the confidence that God is not marking iniquities. Mm. That, 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 that every check mark of iniquity has been nailed to the cross, and I bear them no more. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Oh, my soul. Yeah, yeah. Yes, the Lord is hearing my prayer and using my life as a prophet, priest, and king, not based upon my personal works, not based upon my personal righteousness, not based upon my personal anointing, but based upon the work, personal works and righteousness and anointing of Jesus Christ. Amen. Yes, sir. It's all because of Jesus Christ. It is, it is all because of his anointing and, and, and his work and, and his sacrificial life and death uh, that he died upon the tree and, and his glorious resurrection and his outpoured spirit that, that's the only thing that we have going for us and that's the only way that a sinner can can can, can pray on behalf of another sinner that, that that's the only way that a sinner can be heard by God on behalf of another sinner Also, I want you to notice not just the protection of God's pardon, but also the protection of God's prophet. The protection of God's prophet. Look what he says. The Lord says to Abimelech, Now then return the man's wife, for he is a prophet, so that he will pray for you and you shall live. Now, I want you to remember that Abimelech has just been declaring his own personal morality before the Lord. I mean, when the Lord came to him, I mean, you know, that takes some gumption right there to, to stand before the thrice holy God and say, Lord, I'm innocent. <laughs> I mean, even if you think you're innocent, you, that takes some real gumption to say, I, I'm innocent, Lord. I, I'm an uprightness of heart, you know, I, I, a cleanness of hands, you know. So, so here's Abimelech declaring his own personal moral standing before the Lord. And, 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 and with regard to this particular thing, that there is a certain innocence that Abimelech has, and the Lord himself even, even acknowledges that. The Lord even says that he knows he did this in the in the integrity of his heart and in the cleanness of his hands. But, but as moral as Abimelech was, at least relatively moral, 
And as much integrity that he has, at least relative integrity, Abimelech was still in rebellion against God's way of salvation. Abimelech was still not living in light of the gospel. Abimelech was still a sinner that needed to be justified and saved by faith in, in the coming offspring. And so you can be as moral as you want to be. But until you bow the knee to King Jesus, until you come underneath God's plan of salvation, all your morality is just an expression of pride, a futile attempt to save yourself before the Lord. And as moral as he was, Abimelech still desperately needed the prayers of God's appointed prophet to live. I want you to know that, 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 that he, he, he was Abimelech, and Abimelech is basically saying, look, Lord, I treated my wife well. Lord, I paid my taxes on time. Lord, I walked my dog. Lord, I gave money to the poor. Lord, I did all of these things. And Lord said, you still need the prayers of God's man. You, you, you still need the intercession of God's appointed agent in order to live. If you, you, can, you, can, you, can, you, can, you can build up as much as you want on your moral resume. And if you don't have Jesus Christ, you will still die. You will still be condemned. You, you, you will still eternally die. But, but, but here's the good news. Listen, here's the good news. When Abimelech submitted himself to the Lord's chosen way of salvation, when Abimelech said, I, I don't understand it, Lord, but I, I'm, I'm going to do it anyhow. I've got all my own reasons for thinking that I might not need to do it, but I'm going to do it anyhow. I'm, I'm going to go, and I'm going to go before this man that you've told me to go to. And then when God's appointed man prayed to the Lord, the Lord healed Abimelech, and Abimelech live. Ain't that good news today? Ain't that good news today? Ain't that good news today? That, 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 that Jesus Christ, God's appointed man, is praying on our behalf right now as we sit here with sin-stained hearts and sin-stained lips and sin-stained hands and sin-stained lives and Jesus is praying on our behalf right now and God answers those prayers and you will live. And that's, that's good news today. That, that's good news today. All of this pointed forward to Jesus Christ. Christ listen, G, listen, Christ isn't just a last name. Christ is an office. Christ is a, is a title. And, and what, what's happening here with Abraham is pointing to that office. It, a Christ means that, that Jesus was God's appointed chosen prophet and priest whose prayers God chose to hear on our behalf. God appointed him and empowered him and accepted Jesus Christ to intercede on our behalf. And we see here that, 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 God, that God chose to accept Abraham's prayers on behalf of, Ab of Abimelech. And Abraham was undeserving. Abraham didn't pray perfectly. Abraham had a whole bunch of mess in his life. But, but, but look at here, look at here. We have one who is perfect. We have one who is righteous. We have one who has been raised from the dead. We have one who cannot die. We have one who prays perfectly. We have one who knows our hearts. We have one who says before the Lord everything that needs to be said and God answers his prayers on our behalf. And that's good news. Oh, that's good news. That's good news whether you know it or not, that's good news. Now, the old man, uh, the only reason you're in here today, the only reason you believe today, the only reason you're walking with the Lord today is because the high priest is praying on your behalf. You ought to be grateful for his intercession. Y'all, thank God for his intercession. Y'all say, thank you, Jesus, that when I'm not thinking about you, you're still praying for me. Thank you, Jesus, that when I'm failing, you're still prevailing in prayer. Thank you, Jesus, that when I'm doing the wrong thing, you're still doing the right thing. Thank you, Jesus. You, listen, you, you, you can't be your own priest and prophet. You need Jesus to be that. And we, listen, and, and throughout his life, we, we, we know the kind of prayers that Jesus prayed, and we, and we know when he prayed them. We, we, we see Jesus up on the mountain praying to the Father on behalf of his disciples who were down in the midst of the storm. 
when the, in the valley, when, 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 when they were afraid for their life and, and they were afraid of death and, and they had lost faith and they had lost hope, Jesus is praying for them. And Jesus got a prayer through on their behalf. When, when, when Satan wants to sift you like wheat, and you find yourself succumbing to temptation and, and, and not just denying Jesus once, but, but not just denying Jesus twice, but, but denying Jesus three times. Uh, when you find yourself failing repeatedly and, and failing miserably and, and failing publicly, the Lord is still praying for you that your faith may not fail. Peter, when you are falling asleep, failing to even pray for your own self, Jesus is still praying for you, calling on the Lord on your behalf, praying, oh, praying for you when you're falling asleep. Oh, Lord, and as I think about the fact that as they were nailing him to the cross, as they were sinning against him, the worst kind of sin that was ever committed, as they took his hands and they, they drove the, 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 the nails through his flesh, and, and, and as, they, as they heaped insults upon him, as they spit upon him, as they hated him, Jesus still prayed for them. Jesus said, forgive them, Father, for they know not what they do. That's the kind of high priest you've got. If Jesus would pray for them, don't you think he's praying for you? Yeah. And when you sin against the Lord, you've got to know you've got a high priest that's still praying, forgive them, Father, for they know not what they do. <clears throat> as, as, as we think about our loved ones who are, who are lost and, and who are out there and, and we're worried about it and we're scared about it and we're crying over, I want you to know that Jesus is still praying, forgive them, Father, for they know not what they do. For those of you who are parents and you have children and you're worried about your children and you say, I've seen some stuff in their life and I don't know how they're going to make it, Lord. I don't know if they're going to come to you, Lord. I don't know if they're ever going to come back, Lord. I want you to know that you have a high priest that's saying, forgive them, Father, for they know not what they do. Oh, Lord, thank you, Jesus, for being a praying, interceding high priest for us. That calls the Lord and says, forgive them, Father. Thank God for the protection of the prophet and the priest. And finally, we see here the protection of God's providence. The protection of God's providence. The end of the story says, after all of this whole thing went down, it says, then Abimelech took sheep and oxen and male servants and female servants and gave them to Abraham. Returned Sarah, his wife, to him. And Abimelech said, Behold, my land is before you. Dwell where it pleases you. Woo! Man, this, this thing looked like it worked out for Abraham, didn't it? Abraham, it never does say it. We never do get a sense that, that, that Abraham quite understood the magnitude of what he did. We, we never get a sense that Abraham quite understood all the mess and the junk that he did, but, but, but God was still working on his behalf. And what we see in this passage is we see the Lord governing the world on behalf of the church. We, we, we see the Lord dealing with an unbelieving king on behalf of his people. We, we see the Lord dealing with a whole nation of unbelieving people on behalf of his church. Listen, when the Lord closed up the wombs of the women of Gerar, it indicated that this punishment was happening on behalf of the promised offspring. Mm. Why, why did God choose to punish these people in this way? Because the Lord was saying that, that, that there's something, he was saying to these unbelieving people, there's something connected with the offspring of Abraham. That God is not just defending this man, but God is defending this man's offspring. God is doing this on behalf of this, of this offspring that is coming. I better give this man back his wife and, and I, I, because, because the offspring is coming. There's something God is doing through this offspring. And, and there was a special providence working on behalf of Abraham and Sarah throughout this passage that was connected to the offspring, that was connected to the promise. And, 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 it, and when Abraham had got down to the land of Gerar, Abraham forgot that God was at work on his behalf, uh, on behalf of the promise. Because listen, although there was no fear of God in Gerar, God himself 
was in Gerar. Mm. No, no, no matter where you go, even they might listen. Even if they don't love the Lord, even if there's no fear of God in, in, in these people, God is able to work on behalf of your of His people, even in a strange situation, e, e, even in a even in a, uh, 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 a discouraging situation. We see that God, even though there was no fear of God in that land, God put the fear of God in that land. God worked in a, in the heart of an unbelieving king. God worked in the heart of of an unbelieving nation, and God carried Abraham safely through every trial. There was a special providence over the life uh, of Abraham. And listen, beloved, when you are attached to God's promise in Christ, when you are connected to the promise of the offspring, then there is a special providence. There's a special protection over your life, ensuring that God's promises will be fulfilled in your life. And listen, it doesn't mean, listen, oh man, it doesn't mean that you, that you may not never find yourself in tribulation. It may not mean that you not don't find yourself in distress sometimes. It may not mean that you're not. It doesn't mean that you're not going to find yourself persecuted or in famine or in nakedness or in sword or in danger. But 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 what you have in knowing that you have this special providence on your life, knowing that God is operating and governing the world on behalf of His Christ and on behalf of the people who are joined to His Christ, you can say to the world when when distress and persecution and famine and nakedness come, who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation separate us from the love of Christ? Or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword? It says, for, it, listen, it says, as it is written, listen, for your sake. Oh, Lord, for your sake, for the sake of the promise, for the sake of the offspring, for the sake of the one who was risen from the dead, we are being killed all day long. We are regarded as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am sure that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor death, he keeps going on, nor anything else in all of creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. You think you got a protection on your life? Mm. No matter what comes in your life, God is able to turn it for your good and for his glory. Mm. Because you are joined to Jesus, the Lord is at work orchestrating the events of your life, making you look more and more like the offspring, making you talk more and more like the offspring, making you think more and more like the offspring. And so that means you're going to have to go through some stuff because the offspring went through some stuff. That means you're going to have to be rejected sometime because the offspring was rejected. It means you're going to have some persecutions because the offspring had some persecutions. That means you're going to have some distresses because the offspring had some distresses. Sometimes we know him in the fellowship of his sufferings. But, but, but oh, what a privilege to be made like Jesus. Oh, what a privilege to look like Jesus. Oh, what a privilege to talk and to think like Jesus. Oh, what a privilege. And God is calling us to know him more. Yes, sir. Yes, he is. Through all of these things, mm -hmm. everything that happens to you, listen, yeah. everything that happens to you, mm -hmm. the, listen, listen, God, God's love is able to work through to give his promises to you. Yeah, yeah. I want you to understand, beloved, that you're going to make it. Yeah. You, you just need to know that today. If, if, if you are joined to Jesus by faith, if you have bowed the knee to King Jesus, and, and, and as, as imperfect and messed up as you are, if you have put your last dollar on Jesus, you're going to make it. You're going to make it. If you're always oh, as, as messed up and, and, and wayward and flaky as you are, if you, if you bow the knee to Jesus and you say, for Jesus I live and for Jesus I die, you will make it. And there's nothing in all the world that can knock you out. The devil can't knock you out. The world can't knock you out. Listen, sickness and disease, listen, cancer can't knock you out. It can't do no more. And the Lord allows it to do. And he only allows it to do what it does for the glory of his great name mm. and the good of his people. God is a good God today.
He's faithful in the lives of his people. Amen? Amen. Father, we thank you, Lord, that you are faithful, Lord, to protect your people. We have the protection, O oh Lord, of your pardon, the protection of your prophet, and the protection of your providence. Oh, Father, we, 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 are, we are well protected, Lord. We are well secured. We are, we are surrounded and, 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 and hidden in Christ, O oh Lord. And we thank you for what that means for us, Lord. We, we, we can confess, O oh Lord, that we have had times in which we doubted you, which we thought it might not happen for me. Maybe it will happen for the deacons, or maybe it'll happen for the pastors, or maybe it'll happen for the faithful saints, but, but we have, we, we've been afraid that it might not happen for us, but oh God, we have been reminded, that even us, even us serial stumblers, oh Lord, are hidden in the life of Christ, protected by the righteousness and imputed with the righteousness and filled with the righteousness of Christ. We ask, Father, Lord, that you would give us more boldness and more confidence and more faith, Lord, to to live consistently with this amazing, faithful protection you've given us. And we pray that even as we come to the table, we would be grateful for all of the benefits that you've given to us in Christ. In Jesus' name we pray. All of God's people said, amen.